All right, Shalom. First and foremost, want to Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakudash. The to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Citation to all the I can push and swear truth and sincerity to maturity. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world only calls God and Jehovah. Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the Son's name, whom the world only calls Jesus. And Rachakudash is the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> As always, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, all the Israelites of the Bible. Uh, as well as the speckled bird amongst other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of those nations whose lineage their father's line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites no matter what your outer appearance may seem to be. Uh, as always, I'm your diary from the Great Millstone Branch in Chicago. I want to back with you another lesson. It's going to be entitled, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai is very angry. And hey, man, and you know, just, uh, you know, man, if I'm going to grab this one really quick because people think that hey, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, what they call Jesus, you know, he's going to come back. Blue eyed, blonde hair, happy with sunshine and uh, rainbows and uh, giving out lollipops. Nah, man, that's not what the day of the Lord is going to look like, man. That's why the scriptures say this in, in the book of Amos, chapter 5 and verse uh, 50, uh, 18. Chapter 5 and verse 18, it says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So, a hey, contrary to popular belief, hey, the, the, the end time, the day that, the, that these people, uh, See, how was I, man? It's not going to be a day of uh, rejoicing for them, but for the elect, it's going to be a day of uh, rejoicing. But hey, all in all, it's going to be a gloomy, dark, harsh day, man, as it says in the book of like Zephaniah, chapter one, I believe, man. But hey, you know, Lord will it be edified. I'm going to get into some more precepts, man. This is a uh, Matthew 10 and 34, man, because hey, the Lord is very angry, man. And he said it himself when he comes back, he's not coming back, you know, to send peace, but you know, to but to uh. Let me just read it. Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword, right? The Lord is coming to back to uh, bring out judgment, man, to bring judgment for it, you know? We've been living in a society that been teaching all types of opposite things, doc different doctrines that has been totally in violation against him and the heavenly, heaven, the heavenly father, Yahweh and him, man. So he's coming to turn everything back to his right order, man. And, hey, that's going to come with him breaking down, you know, these things that are built up, you know, built up in wickedness. This is Isaiah chapter 34. This is Isaiah 34 and 1. It says, come near ye nations and hurricane ye people. Uh, it says, let the earth hear and all that is in therein, the world are all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations and his fury upon all his all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Hey, the Lord is getting ready to uh, to uh, basically uh, judge these nations, man, and their armies, man. Through World War Three, it says they're slain. It's like it says, their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood and all of the host of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. And they, it says, uh, verse five, for my sword shall be bathed in the heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon the Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Hey. That's talking about Esau Edom, man. Hey, where is Esau Edom? The uh, Babylon and Great, you know. And hey, Babylon and Great is America, man. So hey, America is gonna be destroyed with uh, ICBM nuclear uh, missiles, man. It says, uh, verse six. It says, the sword of Yahweh is filled with blood, is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia, man, in the land of the Edomites, man. It, it's talking about America, man. You know, it says, and the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of your house vengeance and a year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion, man. So, hey, the Lord is also bringing this judgment for uh, for us, man. You know, this is going to say in the book of Zechariah, it says that the Lord, you know, he, he's angry at these nations for touching us. It says, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and all the land thereof shall become burning pitch. And it's going into that, uh, the judgment of Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed, man. It's going to be a perpetual desert, man. It says, it shall not be quenched day nor night, night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation and shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Hey, it's going to be. As it says, uh, it's going to be basically an example of what, how not to live your life, you know? 
It says they shall it's like it says, but the commandment and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the noblest thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles and the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. So, amen. Hey, this is going into the judgment of Babylon, man. Hey, hey, Babylon is going to be destroyed at the uh, at the arrival of Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, you know. Zechariah 2 and 8. And it reads, it says, uh. For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that touch of you touch of the apple of his eye. And eight, Babylon has, matter of fact, I'm reverse up. Verse seven says, love thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon is America, man. This is, for thus saith Yahweh of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that touch of you touch of the apple of his eye. Hey, what's happening? Justin, let's just say just in Babylon, just in, in America, to you Israelites, man. All type of hurtful works. All type of injustice, injustices have happened unto our people here, man. So, hey, the Lord is extremely angry. It says, for behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that Yahweh of hosts have sent me. So, hey, the Lord is going to, he's going to come back, man. He's going to raise up his people, man, and pour out his indignation upon two-thirds of his people and the heathen, man. You know? Yahweh Shai is coming to save us, man. Hey, he's very angry, man. This is Revelation chapter 17. It's Revelation chapter 17, and I'm going to start at verse 4. I'm sorry, verse 3. It says, so he... Hmm. I'm going to just start at verse 3. It says, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, woman is talking about uh, America, Babylon, and great man. It says, for upon her head was a name written, Mystery, Babylon, and great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And hey, this, this come on, man, what what else? What Where else could, uh, could, could be Mystery, Babylon, man? Everybody take their uh, ways of life, you know, they, they pervert them and, and, and change them to the ways of, uh, of how they get down here in Babylon, man. Verse 6, it says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So, admiration. So, hey, it said it was drunken with the blood of saints. Why? Because, hey, the saints, which are Israelites, according to, I believe, that's book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 5. The saints are Israelites, man. Even the wicked Israelites, they've been uh, cast down in the streets. Blood's been shed, man. Hey, the Lord is extremely upset with that, man. You know? I got to grab. Let me see if it's on the list really quick. Yeah, I got to grab this. Revelation 13. I should just slack you. Yeah. Revelation 13 and verse 13. Well, Salaki verse 10 is 9. It says, If a man have an ear, let him hear. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So, hey, that's what it is, man. The saints, we, we, we're patiently waiting for, for the Lord to come make things right. Because that's, that's true justice, man. That's true equity, true, true equality, man. The so-called Edomite, I mean, slightly, the so-called white man, the Edomite of the Bible, led us into captivity along with these other nations. It's only right that we do the same to them. They killed us with the sword, so it's only right that we do the same to them, man. You know? And that Yahweh Shai is going to be the head of all of that, man. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. You know? This is uh, Isaiah chapter 61. And you know it's righteous, man, because, hey, check it out. Isaiah 61 and uh, verse 2. It says... Uh, Isaiah 61 and verse 2, it says to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. So, hey, when you read up, it talks about these are the good news, the tidings, the good news. 
and, and it's supposed to be said to the nation of Israel, man, that that that, that our Lord Yahweh Shai is getting Yahweh Yahweh Shai is coming ready. Yahweh is getting ready to send His Son Yahweh Shai. You know to properly structure that sentence. He's getting ready to send His Son, man. So what he can do what? Uh, 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 render His uh revenge, man. And to comfort all that morning, hey, comfort all the men that's that's signing and crying, man. And that's the men of the Lord that elect. You know? I just wanted uh, some more. Yeah, I hit verse four. Yeah. Yeah, it says, To appoint unto all of them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified, man. So, hey, at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai is on his way to, uh, I'm going to just hit verse 1, so like it. The spirit of Yahweh power is upon me because Yahweh have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of our Lord, Yahweh, and the day of our vengeance, of our power to comfort all that mourn. So, hey, the day of the Lord is going to be the day that Yahweh Shai comes back, frees the captives here at Babylon, the great. You know, that's the elect of the nation of Israel, the men, women, and children, and the, uh, you know, that's the great multitude. He's coming to open that, uh, open this uh, physical house that we're in. Spiritually, we, we we're out of it, but meant physically, we're in it, man. And, and and to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh, right, and the day of vengeance of our power. So, hey, Yahweh Shai, he, he's hastening for that day, man. Uh, so, like, what's that, uh? probably 60 it's 66 it's like that's the real precept nah 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 uh it's like vengeance isaiah 63 or 4 it's like it. Yeah, this is Isaiah. I just get to the point. Isaiah 63 and verse 4 says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So, hey, Yahweh Shai is, is, is patiently looking for, uh, waiting for Yahweh to give him the go, the green light, so he can come, man, and do the things that we read over in Isaiah 61st chapter, man. You know? And, hey, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be miraculous, man, because, hey, as it reads right here, it says, Yahweh, it's like Exodus 15 and 3, Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name, man. So, hey, if the Most High, Yahweh is a man of war, and Yahweh Shai said this in the book of John 14, John 14 and 9, it says, Yahweh Shai saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? So, hey, Yahweh Shai was saying, you know, on one level, hey, I'm a splitting image of my Father physically, right? But also, Yahweh Shai, He's on one accord. He he's on the same thing that Yahweh is on. So hey, if Yahweh is a man of war, so is his son Yahweh Shai, man. So hey, 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 these people have no idea what's coming, man. Yahweh Shai is very angry, man. Hey, it tells you even that in the book of Revelation right here. Hey, he's coming back for the for the men that pierced him, man. This is uh Yeah. Yeah, I just hit the point, man. This is uh, Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and those are the chariots, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. So, hey, it says that everybody is going to see how we shall when he comes with those chariots, even those that pierced him, man. Why are they going to be back on the planet Earth? How are they back on the planet Earth through reincarnation? Because everybody keep coming back and back every third or fourth generation. But, hey, they're going to be here. So that he can judge them, man. You know, according to Christianity, they would be burning in hell right now. And that's a hell of a precept, <laughs> you know. But uh, this is uh, Matthew 26 and uh, this is Matthew 26 and 52. Because, hey, when the Lord was on the scene here, man, you know, he held his peace. He suffered prophecy to happen, man, because hey, it had to happen, man. But, hey, this time he's going to be able to go all out, man. This is a. Uh, Matthew chapter 26 and verse 52. And it reads, it says, uh, I'm gonna go up. <clears throat> yeah, verse 51, it says, And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shai stretched out his hand and drew a sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. And if I'm correct, this is uh this was the uh 
Apostle Peter that did this, if I'm correct. You know, it says, then say, Yahweh shall unto him, put up, thy, put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take up the sword shall perish with the sword. So, hey, carnally, we can't fight against, you know, the powers that be, the power being at this time, you know, Babylon, a great rule by the Edomites, man. It says, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall present, presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? So, hey, Yahweh Shai was saying, but like, listen, carnality is not the way to go about it, man. I right now can give me a whole army of angels, man. But, hey, you know, he, he suffered him being crucified, man. And he said that, man. It was also, uh, that really wasn't the one I was looking for. Let me see. Yeah, John 8 and 36, man. So, hey, yeah, well, even when Yahweh Shai was here, man, he had to suffer. Prophecy to, be, prophecy to take place. He was beat, you know, treated bad, you know, uh, falsely accused, man. But, hey. It's not going to be like that this time because he's going to be able to. Uh, matter of fact, let me get this one. I'm going to grab this one. This is uh, John 18 and 36. This is a book of John 18 and verse 36. Yep, uh, John 18, 36 says, yeah, how shall I answer? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to, to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from this. And right at this point in time, you know, it wasn't yeah, how shall I's time to take down these kings, to rule over these kings, to take up, you know, uh, uh, spiritual power and, and break down, man. But hey, this is going to be the time, man. You know, yeah, how shall I's coming back really, really angry, man. This is why he said this in a book of, uh, yep, Isaiah 47 and verse 3. I'll start at verse 1. Come down and send a daughter, so I can sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. And virgin daughter of Babylon is America, you know, because it really has nothing, you know, really damaging happened to America. It says, sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Right? They ain't going to be called spy, uh, <clears throat> touchless. You know, they gonna be called, you know, unfuck widowable. The Lord is getting ready to bring them down, man. Take those crowns off their head. It says, take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks, make bare the leg. Uncover the, 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 uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, Yahweh Ba'ashem Shai of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. So, hey, Yahweh Shai said, uh, I will not meet thee as a man, right? He's not going to meet you as he came 2,000 years ago, you know, and just his spiritual body, which was even, I mean, Slaki and his physical body, which was even more better than the, the average man. Now, he's coming to meet you as a God, man, as a power. It says in the day of my, uh, in the day of my uh, power, Slaki, I forgot his word. It says in the day of my, it says my people will be willing in the day of my power, man, you know? Hey, that's, that's how bad it's going to be. Jake, be, Jake, uh, these Jake two thirds that be scoffing and stuff, they gonna want to be Israelites when they see Yahweh Shai has full power, man. It's Revelation chapter nineteen, <clears throat> sorry, verse eleven. Yeah, it says, "And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war." So, hey, that white horse represents Yahweh Shai, you know, powerful. It says his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. <clears throat> and hey, that uh, those many crowns represents him uh, conquering these other nations, man, and their armies, their governments. Verse uh, 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, which represents the chariots. And out of his mouth go a, go a sharp sword. That it shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the wine press, the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty Power. And on, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, a hey, a hey, that's 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 the that's the uh, that's the mood. Yahweh Shai is coming back in, man. He's coming back to conquer, to take down, to break apart, to bring salvation to to the people that's. Been trying to live as best as they can to please him. Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, man. You know? Hey, so, hey, he ain't coming back, you know, blind eye, blue hair, you know, blind uh, hair, blue eye, man. Uh, 
Uh, I get this last one because hey, it says he's coming to the astonishment. This is the book of second Andrew, chapter 13 and verse uh, 30. It says, and then you read up. This was talking about, I started verse 29, but it was talking about uh, the vision the prophet Ezra's had. Well, he's seen Yahushua coming on that UFO. It says, behold, the days come when the most high will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. And he, who is the he, Yahweh is going to sing Yahweh, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. So wait, the Lord is coming back and he's going to surprise a lot of you people. He's not coming back a so-called white man. He's not coming back a so-called black man. He's coming back an Israelite with, you know, well, I shouldn't say a so-called black man. He is a so-called black man, but, you know, just not to be simple, you know, Jake, be simple. You know, he's coming back an Israelite of the tribe of, of, of Judah, dark complected skin, very dark complected skin as a reason, Revelation 1. And he's coming back, man. He ain't coming back, you know, to reward everybody, you know, in a, in a, in a good sense, you know. He's giving back rewards that's going to be positive and Negative man, so wait, Lord willing, this was just a quick edifying lesson. Call her like Mla Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachak Wadash. The one said the elders need positive great millstones. Citation to all the I can push his word with truth and sincerity with charity. Shalom and a Baba Ball.